Hello. Wait. Oh, today I will be explaining a problem that was put on the uh, Taiwan Linguistics Olympiad Facebook page. It's from the North American Computational Linguistics Olympiad. It's from the 2016 contest, and it's called Be There or Be Squared. Okay, so I'm just going to start. So as you can see, as you can see, this is a number problem. Okay, we have we know what the numbers are, we just don't know the correspondences. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find the base. Nothing really jumps out at this point. So what I usually do is I start out with the remainders or the words at the end. Now I'm going to assume the words at the end are the remainders because most languages have numbers that go from larger units to smaller units. Like for example, in English, we have say 121, it's 100, then 20, then one. So I'm, I'm going to assume that this language is the same way and that these are the remainders when divided by the base. Okay, so now we have these five remainders with these frequencies. So really, um, really at this point, um, what you have to do is you just have to take the 10 numbers like this and just divide by possible bases and look at the remainders until you get one that matches five remainders with these frequencies. Now, what I did was I also had a separate step where I kind of um, where I kind of reasoned out that the base is probably larger than ten. But in the interest of time, I'm going to skip that. So really, you can replace this with you know just just starting up from the small numbers um, all the way up. And eventually, you'll find out that the base is 15, because it's the only number that fits this. Okay, so you have 15, and then you have these frequencies. So you know that the base is probably 15. And then you'll probably feel pretty good about yourself for finding the base, which is, you know, usually the harder part of the problem. Okay, so now that we have the base, we can start matching these. Okay, so right away, let's look at the frequencies in this. Okay, so the first one that we see is 9. 9 shows up once, 0 shows up once. Okay, so it's probably the same thing, right? So that's one match right here, F, that's 9. Okay, that was easy. Okay, uh, similarly, 4 shows up 3 times. The only one that shows up 3 times here is Maria. So we say, okay, G is probably 4. Okay, so we're done with another one. You know what, let's circle these to show that we're done. Okay, so going with that, we know that you know, these only have one word, right? Which kind of makes sense because we know that the base is 15. So these are these are both smaller than the base. So it would make sense that it's only one word, right? With English, our base is 10. So any number less than 10 is only one word, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so the only other one that's one word is B, Bira. So we assume that that's also a square that's less than 15. And the only one that's left is one. So we know that B is 1. That's another one. Oh, actually, I should update this. Okay. So luckily, Bira actually only shows up twice. So we can say that if this is 1, then this also has a remainder of 1 when you divide by 15. And it's a square. The only other one that's like that is 16. So E is 16. Okay, so let's look at this again. We have this guy over here. Guira ni. So like, I don't know what that means, but that probably means that 15 plus 1. So this probably is just 115. So if we look at D, it's probably also just 115. And the only other square in the range of 15 and 29 is 25. So we know that D is probably 25. If D is 25, then this should be 15 plus 10. So Pira is 10. Now, 10 also only shows up twice, so we know that this, j, also has a remainder of 10 when you divide it by 15, and that ends up being 100. Okay, so at this point, we only have 4 left just by going, you know, going on, just going from one to the next, but this time, it takes a little more thinking. Okay, the only remainder left that we haven't used is 6, so we know that Orgaria is 6. So now we're a little stuck here, but we see this. We don't get why there are commas here. We don't really get what the Ganaga thing means either. But 
we know that j is 100, and this is a 10, and the base is 15. So the thing about 100 is 100 is 6 times, fi six times 15 plus 10. So this part, I guess, is not really important to the number, I think, is the main thing. So then what could this be, though? Well, to answer that, let's look at C. With C, we know the remainder is 6, so it's either 81 or 36. And we see another 6-ish thing over here, right? But, you know, neither of them, but neither of them are less than, neither of them are greater than 6 times 15. But if we think about it, actually, 81 is pretty close. 81 is 5 times 15 plus 6. So it's only a bit under 6 times 15. So with that, we can kind of revisit this, this one. So what if possibly our structure is 15 times 6 plus 10 towards 15 times 7? So we're assuming that this is the next number consecutively. So going to here, that would make this 81, right? This would be 15 times 5 plus 6 towards 15 times 6. So we're going to say that's right. So we're going to say this is 81. And then we'll say that this, by process of elimination, ends up being 36. Because it also has a remainder of 6. So then moving on to here. We know that this is 15 times 5 plus 6 towards 15 times 6, so this should be 5, and, but now it's over here. So this should be 15 times 4 plus 4 towards 15 times 5, which of course makes I 64. The process of elimination gives us H as 49, and now we have all of these matched. Now we've done the first part, we can do the second part. So let's look at this. We have not seen these numbers before. This makes no sense. Okay, but from here, we know it's base 15, right? So there should only be 14 number thingies. And from here, hopefully we'll be able to get the first, I mean, I don't know, hopefully we'll be able to get like a bunch of them and then we'll be able to figure out which ones these are. So let's look over here at this nice, neat graph. Now, it's titled approximate stuff because these are just things that I've noticed that seem to carry the meaning of the number. These probably aren't the actual roots. Um, so some of these I got from like over here. Remember, it's 15 times something, 15 times n plus something towards 15 times n plus 1. So you can figure out a lot of these. And from here, we know that this is 7. So this is 7, so this should be 8. So that's why we have 8, 2. So as you'll notice, we only have these four spaces left over. We have four words we don't know. And we know that they're consecutive. So these are these. So this must be plus 11, plus 12, plus 13, and plus 14. So let's figure out what this is. This is 7, so this is 15 times 7, right? 105. 105 plus 11, 116. 117, 118, and 119. And we're done for this part. Okay, let's do the third and final part. And just get this over with, okay? Two. We know the root is key, right? From A, from part, from, from this A thing, okay? We know the root is key. So how do we turn it into the N term? Because nothing ends with an I. Well, it looks like... Looking from other examples, we have beer up here and dira. So it looks like if the root ends in I, then you add R A. So ki becomes kira. Now let's look at four. Four is literally like item G, so like this should not be hard. Okay, C, uh, six. Well, we can look at the N, it's Wargaria. And then seven. Well, we know the root is ka from the second section, but that doesn't sound right either. Well, notice that warada is a root for six as well, as you can see from item J. And they add ria to it. So it looks like if it ends with an A, you add ria. So ka ends with an A, so we add ria, so it becomes karia. Now with 22, 
that's 15 plus 7. Okay, so we so we look to items D and E, where it looks like if there's only one 15, it's become Guira Ni. Alright, so we just add a 7 term to it. So we have Guira Ni Paria. 44. Well, that's 2 times 15 plus 14, right? So we know what 2 times 15 ends up being from part A, right? So we have gui ki, comma, it's a weird one, and taboni ganaga. And then 14 we have from part 2, Diria. G is 66. That's 4 times 15 plus 6. And we know what 4 times 15 is from item I. Right? So we literally copy that over. Except we change the last term. Instead of Maria, it becomes Wargovia because we're adding 6. Okay, 8, 77. It's 5 times 15 plus 2. That's not hard either. We've seen that over with part C. So again, we can copy that. See, I think something you can tell with a lot of these problems is that you can get a lot of translations just by looking at the data they've given you. So if you have anything you're not really clear about, instead of trying to figure out the rules, sometimes it's better to look at the things the data they've given you. Now this doesn't always work if you have more kind of difficult to tell rules, um, more subtle ones, but for the really obvious stuff, if you're not sure or if you don't have time, then it really does help to just look at the examples. So two for Kira, 88 again, it's just five times 15, Except we again we have to change the last term because it's five times fifteen plus thirteen, and we know thirteen from here is hilarious. So we add that on too, and then one hundred seventy three. This is the big one. It's eleven times fifteen plus eight. So eleven. We know the we know the no we know Beria Beria over here is eleven. But now we kind of have to go in the reverse direction here. We know that where Garia is the end term for 6, so Bearia is the end term for 11, then the root should be Bea, right? And then we need 12. Well, 12 is home Bearia. So again, we can take the Ria off and add this Naganaga thing. So home Beane Donaga. And we add an 8. And we know the root is Holly from this. So again, we know that it ends with an I, U, N, R, A. So it's Halira. That's it. And we're done with this problem.